Hello everyone, welcome to day number 133, May 13th. Today we're going to be reading from 1 Samuel 14, 1 through 52. And I hope you guys were able to watch the two videos from the, the Bible Project. I posted a video and I think it's helpful. And it might help you understand the story of these two books. So let's go ahead and read. One day, Jonathan said to his armor bearer, Come on, let's go over to where the Philistines have their, po their outpost. But Jonathan did not tell his father what he was doing. Meanwhile, Saul and his 600 men were camped on the outskirts of Gibeah, around the pomegranate tree at Migron. Among Saul's men was Aijah, the priest, who was wearing the, the ephod, the priestly vest. Aijah was the son of Ishabod's brother. Aitob, son of Phineas, son of Eli, the priest of the Lord who had served at Shiloh. No one realized that Jonathan had left the Israelite camp. To reach the Philistine outpost, Jonathan had to go down between the two rocky cliffs that were called Boses and Seneh. The cliff on the north was in front of Mikmash, and the one on the south was in front of Giba. Let's go across to the outpost, outpost of those pagans, Jonathan said to his armor bearer. Perhaps the Lord will help us, for nothing can hinder the, can hinder the Lord. He can win a battle whether he has many warriors or only a few. Do what you think is best, the armor bearer replied. I'm with you completely, whatever you decide. All right then, Jonathan told him. We will cross over and let them see us. If they say to us, stay where you are or we'll kill you, then we will stop and not go up to, to them. But if they say, come on up and fight, then we will go up. That will be the Lord's sign that he will help us defeat them. When the Philistines saw them coming, they shouted, Look, the Hebrews are craw crawling out, out of their holes. Then the men from the outpost shouted to Jonathan, Come on up here and we'll teach you a lesson. Come on, climb right behind me. Jonathan said to his armor bearer, for the Lord will help us defeat them. So they climbed up using both hands and feet, and the Philistines fell before Jonathan, and his armor bearer killed those who came behind them. They killed some 20 men in all, and their bodies were, were scattered over about half an acre. Suddenly, panic broke out in the Philistine army, both in the camp and in the field, including even the outpost and raiding parties. And just then, an earthquake struck, and everyone was terrified. Saul's lookout in Gibeah of Benjamin saw a strange sight. The vast army of Philistines began to melt away in every direction. Call the roll and find out who's missing, Saul ordered. And when they checked, they found that Jonathan and his armor bearer were gone. Then Saul shouted to Aijah, Bring the ephod here. For at that time, Aijah was wearing the ephod in front of the Israelites. But while Saul was talking to the priest, the confusion in the Philistine camp grew louder and louder. So Saul said to the priest, Never mind, 
let's get going then Saul and all his men rushed out to the battle and found the Philistines killing each other there was terrible confusion everywhere even the Hebrews who had previously gone over to the Philistine army revolt and join in with Saul Jonathan and the rest of the Israelites likewise the men of Israel who were hiding in the hill country of Ephraim joined the chase when they saw the Philistines running away so the Lord saved Israel that day and the battle continued to rage even beyond Beth Aven. Now the men of Israel were pressed to ex ex exhaustion that day because Saul had placed them under an oath saying, let a curse fall on anyone who eats before evening, before I have full revenge of my enemies. So no one ate anything all day, even though they had a they had all found honeycomb on the ground in the forest. They didn't dare touch the honey because they all feared the oath they had taken. But Jonathan had, no, had not heard his father's command, and he dipped the end of his stick into a piece of the honeycomb and ate the honey. After he had eaten it, he felt refreshed. But one of the men saw him and said, Your father made the army take a strict oath that anyone who eats food today will be cursed. That is, with, that is why everyone is weary and faint. My father has made trouble for us all, Jonathan exclaimed. A command like that only hurt us. See how refreshed I am now that I have eaten this little bit of honey if the men had been allowed to eat freely from the food they found among our enemies think how many more philistines we could have killed they chased and killed the philistines all day from micmash to agelon growing more and more faint that evening they rushed for the battle plunder and butchered the, the sheep, goats, cattle, and calves, but they ate them without draining the blood. Someone reported to Saul, Look, the men are sinning against the Lord by eating meat that still has blood in it. That is very wrong, Saul said. Find a large stone and roll it over here. Then go out among the troops and tell them, Bring the cattle, sheep, and goats here to me. Kill them here and drain the blood before you eat them. Do not sin against the Lord by eating meat with the blood still in it. So that night, all the troops brought their animals and slaughtered them there. Then Saul built an altar to the Lord. It was the first of the altars he built to the Lord. Then Saul said, Let's chase the Philistines all night and plunder them until sunrise. Let's destroy every last one of them. His men replied, We'll do whatever you think is best. But the priest said, Let's ask God first. So Saul asked God, Should we go after the Philistines? Would you help us defeat them? But God made no reply that day. Then Saul said to the leaders, Something's wrong. I want all my army commanders to come here. We must find out what sin was committed today. I vow by the name of the Lord who rescued Israel, Israel that the sinner will surely die, even if it's my own son Jonathan. But no one will tell him what the trouble was. Then Saul said, Jonathan and I will stand over here. And all of you stand over there. And the people responded to Saul, Whatever you think is best. Then Saul prayed, O Lord, God of Israel, please show us who is guilty and, was, and who is innocent. Then they cast sacred lots, and Jonathan and Saul were chosen as the guilty ones. 
and the people were declared innocent. Then Saul said, Now cast lots again and choose between me and Jonathan. And Jonathan was shown to be the guilty one. Tell me what you have done, Saul demanded of Jonathan. I tasted a little honey, Jonathan admitted. It was only a little bit on the end of my stick. Does that deserve death? Yes, Jonathan, Saul said. You must die. May God strike me and even kill me if you do not die for this. But the people broke in and said to Saul, Jonathan has won this great victory for Israel. Should he die? Far from it. As surely as the Lord lives, no, not one hair of his head will be touched. For God helped him to do a great deed today. So the people rescued Jonathan and he was not put to death. Then Saul called back the army from chasing the Philistines and the Philistines returned home. Now when Saul had secured his grasp on Israel's throne, he fought against his enemies in every direction, against Moab, Ammon, Edom, the kings of Sobah, and the Philistines. And wherever he returned, he was victor victorious. No. And wherever he turned, he was victorious. He performed great deeds and conquered the Amalekites, saving Israel from Israel from all those who had plundered them. Saul's sons included Jonathan, Ishbosheth, and Milkishwa. Milkishwa. Oh, no, Malkishwa. He also had two daughters, Merab, who was older, and Michal. Or Michael. Saul's wife was Ainuam, the daughter of Aimas. The commander of Saul's army was Abner, the son of Saul's uncle Nair. Saul's father, Kish, and Abner's father, Nair, were both sons of Abiel. The Israelites fought constantly with the Philistines throughout Saul's lifetime. So whenever Saul observed a young man who was brave and strong, he drafted him into his army. John 7, 31 through 53. Many among the crowds at the temple believed in him, Jesus. After all, they said, would you expect the Messiah to do more miraculous signs than this man has done? When the Pharisees heard that the crowds were whispering such things, they and the leading priests sent temple guards to arrest Jesus. But Jesus told them, I will be with you only a little longer. Then I will return to the one who sent me. You will search for me, but not find me. You cannot go where I'm going. The Jewish leaders were puzzled by this statement. Where is he planning to go? They asked. Is he thinking of leaving the country and going to the Jews in other lands? Maybe he will even teach the Greeks. What does he mean when he says, You will search for me but not find me. And you cannot go where I'm going. On the last day, the climax of the festival... Jesus stood and shouted to the crowds, Anyone who is thirsty may come to me. Anyone who believes in me may come and drink. For the scriptures declare, Rivers of living water will flow from his heart. When he said living water, he was speaking of the Spirit, who will be given to everyone believing in him. But the Spirit had not yet been given, because Jesus had not yet entered his into his glory. When the crowds heard him say this, some of them declare, Surely this man is the prophet we've been expecting. Others said, He is the Messiah. Still others said, But he can be. Will the Messiah come from Galilee? 
For the scriptures clearly state that the Messiah will be born of the royal line of David in Bethlehem, the village where King David was born. So the crowd was divided about, about him. So the crowd was divided about him. Some even wanted him arrested, but no one laid a hand on him. When the temple guards returned without having arrested Jesus, the leading priests and Pharisees demanded, Why didn't you bring him? We have never heard anyone speak like this. The guards responded, Have you been led astray too? The Pharisees mocked. Is there a single one of us rulers or Pharisees who believes in him? This foolish crowd follows him, but they are ignorant of the law. God's curse is on them. The Nicodemus, the leader who had met with Jesus earlier, spoke up. Is it legal to convict a man before he is given a hearing? He asked. They replied, Are you from Galilee too? Search the scriptures and see for yourself. No prophet ever comes from Galilee. Quote unquote. The most ancient Greek manuscripts do not include John 7, 53 through 8, 11. And verse 53. Then the meeting broke up and everyone went home. Psalm 101, 1 through 31. O oh God, whom I praise, don't stand silent and aloof while the wicked slander me and tell lies about me. They surround me with hateful words and fight against me for no reason. I love them, I love them, but they try to destroy me with accusations even as I am praying for them. They repay evil for good and hatred for my love. They say, Get an evil person to turn against him. Send an accuser to bring him to trial. When his, case, when his case comes up for judgment, let him be pronounced guilty. Count his prayers as sins. Let his ears be few. Let someone else take his position. May his children become fatherless and his wife a widow. May his children wander as beggars and be driven from their ruined homes. May creditors seize his entire estate and strangers take all he has earned. Let no one be kind to him. Let no one pity his fatherless children. May all his offspring die. May his family name be blotted out in the next generation. May the Lord never forget the sins of his fathers May his mother's sins never be erased from the record. May the Lord always remember these things. And may his name disappear from human memory. For he refused all kindness to others. He persecuted the poor and needy. And he hounded the, broke -hearted, the broken hearted to death. He loved to curse others. Now you curse him. He never blessed others. Now don't you bless him. Cursing is as natural to him as his clothing, or the water he drinks, or the rich, or the rich food he eats. Now may his curses return and cling to him like clothing. May they be tied around him like a belt. May those curses become the Lord's punishment for my accusers who speak evil of me. But deal well with me, O Sovereign Lord, for the sake of your own reputation. Rescue me, because you are so, so faithful and good. For I am a poor and needy, and my heart is full of pain. I am fading like a shadow at dusk. I am brushed off like a locust. My knees are weak from fasting, and I am skin and bones. I am a joke to people everywhere. When they see me, they shake their heads in scorn. 
Help me, O Lord my God. Save me because of your unfailing love. Let them see that this is your doing, that you yourself have done it, Lord. Then let them curse me if they like, but you will bless me. When they attack me, they will be disgraced. But I, your servant, will go right on rejoicing. May my accusers be clothed with disgrace. May their humiliation cover them like a cloak. But I will give repeated thanks to the Lord, praising Him to everyone, for He stands beside the needy, ready to, sa to save them from those who condemn them. Proverbs 15, 5-7 Only a fool despises a parent's discipline. Whoever learns from correction is wise. There is treasure in the house of the godly, but the earnings of the wicked bring trouble. The lips of the wise give good advice. The heart of a fool has none to give. Amen. Always thanking the Lord for His word. We're declaring it everywhere we go. Have an amazing day. God bless you. I'll see you guys tomorrow.